She's been a counselor at the center for a few years. She has extensive background in counseling, crisis counseling, and she's also a very anointed teacher. She heads up our women's ministry at the Deliverance Center, and her name is Julie Andrews. Can we welcome her, please? Is my mic on? I'm a little tall. Is it on? Okay, good. I can't see you back there. I'm a little taller than YouTube. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much for coming. I might cry. <laughs> wow. So every Tuesday night, um, Oh, I'm Julie Andrews. Hi. Um, every Tuesday night, we have a women's group that I started a couple years ago. And I prayed and prayed for a guitar player. And she came, and she started singing that song, I Will Make Room for You. And so it was really great just to hear that song. Um, God makes room for us. When we follow him with our whole heart, he'll make this space. For you to stand upon. I'm very humbled to be here, so thank you. Um, I got to get through some announcements. I might need some tissues. I need tissues around. <laughs> Thanks, sister. <laughs> I don't know about that song when we say, Come overwhelm us, Holy Spirit. We would be all on the floor. You would not be in your chair. You would not be uttering one word. You would be crying your face off on the floor if the Lord came with his presence. I can barely stand it. Sometimes I'm like, okay, hold up. Okay, so we have some announcements. Okay, so the first slide, what is it? Let's see. <laughs> um, if we want to go to the next slide, please. Okay, great. Uh, so we have two, so we have a lot of things going on at the Arizona Deliverance Center these days. Um, Sunday morning, Mike, uh, Mike Smith, Brother Mike, who started the ministry, he has a podcast, and uh, that's on Sunday mornings on our, his Facebook. And then Mondays, I do a ladies' Zoom meeting, and that's pretty well attended. And if you want to be a part of that, it's on Monday nights at 6.30 p.m. Just send me an email at steps to freedom adc at gmail.com and I'll send you the link and then we also have a guy uh, it's for both guys and girls as everybody's welcome um, brother Rick Cat he does that and it's steps of deliverance at gmail.com and he'll send you the link um, and so it's an opportunity for you to get individual prayer there uh, there are quite a few women that come on our Monday nights we have about 60 people that show up on a regular basis and they're from all over the world. Um, there's, a, there's a hunger out there, which is really amazing. So um, we have that. And I mentioned I do my... Uh-oh. If you're ever in uh, Phoenix, Arizona on a Tuesday night, ladies, come. And then we'll go to the next slide. All right. And we have a phone ministry. I don't know if you're aware of this, but... Um, and one of our phone ministers is going to be sharing this afternoon, Miss Stephanie. And uh, we do, if you want, need, uh, if you would like ministry, if you would like an appointment. So what we do is, so I'm a counselor there, and we meet with you, and we get to know you a little bit, and get to know, you know, how the enemy has wrecked your life, and what areas of your life are not going so well. Um, if you're like me, I had a lot of success in a lot of different areas of my life, but one area was a train wreck. And so I couldn't figure out and didn't um, make that better, the other areas of my life. So if that's you, you're like, you know, I just need to talk to somebody. I need someone to pray, agree with me, pray with me, and um, get these spirits out of me. Then, then we have that. And you just email Brother Mike at mike at hardcorechristianity.com. It's very effective. And um, yeah, you don't have to, you know. You're, you can be on the phone. We can do Zoom. It doesn't hurt. All right. And I want to point out some books that um, Mike wrote. One is called Atonement Healing. 
It's got a bunch of scriptures about healing. That's a good book. It's $10. The other one is Satan Finally Exposed called um, There Really Is a Boogeyman, 10 bucks. And then the one that's really amazing is called Plan of Spirits. If you know, if you're in ministry, I think I'm going in and out. I am? Okay. Um, if you are a minister or you're working with people with mental illness, anything from depression to anxiety all the way up to schizophrenia, you need this book. It's only 20 bucks. Okay? It's going to explain to you why they're so sick and how they can get better. Um, we also have a flash drive. It's got 18 videos on it, 18 training videos for $50. We're not here to make money. We're here to help people get free, OK? Um, so I just kind of feel led to share a minute of my own testimony. Um, I was diagnosed with depression, I guess, clinical depression about 20 years ago. And at first it started with a panic disorder. I was waking up in the middle of the night, having a pan, I'd wake up in a panic disorder. I couldn't believe, breathe. My heart was pounding. I was scared. I had this terrifying feeling and it lasted for four nights in a row. And I'd started a new job and I didn't exactly know why that was happening. I know now why it was happening, but I didn't know then. And that led me to a little white pill called Xanax. You ever hear of that? Miracle working power in that thing. I thank God for that pill. I got saved when I was 21, so I was well acquainted with the Lord, and I was in church, and I loved the Lord with all my heart, and I was even serving in ministry. But I started having, having this panic and, and this anxiety, and it, and it wouldn't stop. And so I began taking medication. And that led to a lot of crying, fits of crying. And oh, it was terrible. I just had finished my master's degree in counseling. I got a new job as a dropout prevention specialist. I was, I was in my 30s. I was newly married. I was at the top of my fitness. I was, it was, everything was great, except I had this thing running nonstop inside of me. And so um, it took me a while to. Um, figure out what was really going on. And you know what was really going on was I was, I had one foot in the world and I had one foot in the Lord. That's really what was going on. And when I did that, when I lived my life that way, it opened a door to evil spirits. And they got into my body. They got into my mind. And they tormented me. Long story short, 18 years later, I'm on not just one little pill, but several little pills, and then antidepressants up to almost 300 milligrams a day. I was sick, very sick. I lost my career, I lost my home, I lost my savings, I lost almost everything. Um, the devil was taking my mind. Because I couldn't make a decision about who I wanted to serve. Look, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to talk about, you know, how to prepare for deliverance, I hope. But uh, do not go for deliverance if you are not willing to lay that sin down. Don't do it. Do, do not do it. Look, manage, manage your demons, manage your life. Keep, I'm not telling you to stop taking medication. I'm, I would never, ever, ever tell somebody to do that. Um, I did it the wrong way. I tend to do things the wrong way first. So I got off everything called turkey and, and then <laughs> emailed Brother Mike, and he's like, you know, explaining to me, oh, those are just spirits in your brain, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I can't understand you. I'm, I'm three days without this potent medic, this poison, really. And then uh, he just wrote in an email, get out now. And I had to run to the toilet, and I started coughing for about 15 minutes, spitting out crap. And I was delivered. Yeah. Praise God. 18 years. 18 years. Now, I wasn't like, 
down and then 15 minutes I was like, oh, rainbows and, and unicorns. It wasn't that at all. I had a long road ahead of me, but I know that spirit came out. I had to tear down the strongholds. So it's not, it's not as simple like that. So please, please, please do not. We're going to have an altar call later. Do not come up for deliverance if you are still going to live in sin. Because they'll just come back, and they'll torment you more. And it gets worse. I know I did it. I met Mike in 2012. 2012. I could have been a little farther along if I would have stayed with him. <laughs> but I didn't get the I didn't get the, the anxiety out. I didn't get the depression out. I didn't get the lust out. There's things I didn't get out. They went dormant. They went into hiding. And when I left the ministry after five months of, of Hardcore deliverance, a lot of crying, a lot of coughing. That's how it came out for me. Um, they came back and they got me at church through a minister. Okay, they're they're very intelligent. Um, so anyway, I guess we have a next slide. I'll get back to it <laughs> eventually. What do we got? Okay, I can barely see this. I have to look at my nose. So you might feel inspired to give to our ministry. And this is how you can do it. I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry, it's small. Um, but we have an app called Tithely. And if you want to give, if you have an Android phone, there's the phone number. If you have an iPhone, there's the phone number. You, you text it on your phone, and then it sends you a text message back. And then it tells you what to do. Okay, that's just one of the ways. Um, of course, we take cash checks. <laughs> We have a card reader. You can give online. It's um, and all the money goes to the ministry. Every single person in the ministry is a volunteer. Mike Smith is a volunteer from the first day he started, and um, freely we have received, and freely we give. All right, so I think I can start. Yeah, so how to prepare for deliverance and healing. Um, yeah, one, you got to be serious. You need to be born again, and this is why. Some people are confused about this. Um, as a believer, any believers in the room? <laughs> All right. Thank you for feedback. Um, as a believer, you have authority and power to cast out demons. It says you can trample on snakes and scorpions, which is an example of these spirits, these evil, terrifying, monstrous spirits. They're very annoying, and, and they just wreck our lives, right? Or somebody you know. But we all have authority. You can cast them out. But you need to use wisdom. Please use wisdom. Um, and so I, I do not, when a person comes into my office and it happens, oh, I just had a lady show up in my class on Tuesday. And, and she was asked, are you born again? And she was like, I, no. And I was like, okay, well, we need to do that first. <laughs> because if, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you don't have the power, the backup punch, to fight back when they come back. Because they'll come back. All right? So whoever you're working with, make sure that they're not just a Christian, a fan of Jesus, but they are actually had a spiritual experience and they are born again. And that looks different for everybody, right? I'm not saying they had to have this big, elaborate, you know, me. I, it was simple. It was simple. I said the sinner's prayer a hundred times, no, probably like 20 times, honestly. And I, I was like, is it, did I do it? Did I do it? I said the prayer. Did I say it right? Do I need to say it louder? Do I need to say it faster? You know, but then it was one day I had this experience where it's like I could not understand the preacher up there yelling and sweating, and then I could. It was like the whole gospel made sense to me. And then I knew I was different. I didn't want to listen to secular music anymore. My life completely changed. Um, and so if, that per if you got somebody in your you know, you're working with and they are born again, great, go for it. Okay, so I want to explain something. This is a, a revelation that came to Brother Mike, and I'll give you the scripture, scripture reference for it. 
the five parts to a human, and we're going to move forward to the figure. Um, you know that scripture that says, love the Lord God with all your what? With all your, with all your, and with all your, right. What's missing? Your spirit. Yeah. You know why that's missing? Your spirit already, already loves the Lord with everything it's got. You got the Holy Spirit in there. That's the part of you that's saved. That's the part of you that is born again. That's the part of you that is a new creation. Evil spirits can't get in there. But we sure know they cause problems in the other parts, right? So, so it's important to understand when, when you receive the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make you born again in your mind because you're still thinking crappy stuff. You're still having negative thoughts. Oh, I have the mind of Christ. Well, do you? Because the mind of Christ was, I'm going to only do what I see the Father doing. But I see you lying. I see you cheating. I see you yelling at your spouse. That's not the mind of Christ. So don't kid yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Come out of denial. Okay? Come out of deception. <laughs> And realize that this is sanctification. <clears throat> this is the part our mind, be having, developing the mind of Christ is that part of sanctification, right? Our soul. How many of you were kids once? Yeah. And your parents made some mistakes, right? And they, you got hurt. And so your soul got hurt, your emotions. That's where your emotions are. And that soul, when you become born again, although it, a lot of healing does occur, I, I believe that when you first get born again, a lot of great, amazing things happen. That's the greatest miracle of all, salvation. So your soul, um, you know, needs healing. It's not brand new. Amen, right? It is not. Your soul is not brand new. Does, don't you get triggered by annoying people? Okay, don't look at anybody. Don't look at anybody. <laughs> All right. And so um, the heart part of the person is the conscience, and that's the seat of your morality, the part of you that says this is right and this is wrong. And so when you started making decisions in your life about what was right and wrong, we call that the age of accountability. Before the age of accountability, you're just doing what you're told. I want to get in trouble. But then there comes a point when you realize, you know what? It's wrong to, sit, to pull my sister's hair. It's wrong. And I need to decide, do I do it or not do it? Right and wrong. That's your conscience. And when you choose to go against what your conscience says, the Bible says that you Fear it like a hot iron. That's what allowed you to do things you never thought you would do. You seared your conscience over time. So the enemy definitely has a part that he plays in that, right? Oh, it, how I shouldn't do that. Oh, it won't be so bad. Come on, you could do it. You know, right? You think it's you reasoning this thing out, but it's really the enemy coaxing you, encouraging you, guiding you to do wrong, to go against your conscience. And so when I see a person go through deliverance, that's one of the things that gets healed, I guess. Pretty, you know, it happens. You can see it pretty quickly as their conscience gets healed and that searing of it. I don't know. The Holy Spirit does this a miraculous thing and heals the conscience. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot sleep my boyfriend anymore. No, I can't do that. Um, that's not okay. You, you have this awareness. You're like, that's wrong. Okay. And so we all know somebody who's got a sickness, right? <laughs> don't look at anybody. Um, the enemy gets in the body, and we know this. We can see that in Scripture all day long, right? 
the spirit of infirmity causing problems. All right, so how do spirits get in? They come in two different ways. They come in physically. Oh, there should be one before that. There we go. Those are the, the, the spirits come in through our five senses. So when you look at something, when you were little and you saw mommy and daddy fighting, yelling, hitting, slapping, pulling, slamming, when you saw that as a little kid, that was an open door to spirits to come in through your eye gates, through your ear gates, <gasps> fear. Oh, my gosh. And some guys and girls I have counseled, they feel like, I now have to protect them. I got to get in between them. I can't allow them to kill each other. And they develop, the spirit gives them what, the spirits only give you what they have, is a false responsibility to save. It's a savior complex. And so adults, you grow up, and now you're helping everybody and anybody. I was a professional. 15 years, I mentored a family that did not love Jesus. But I thought I was doing the right thing. And I really wasn't. The Lord showed me. Um, I won't talk more about that. But they come in through our five senses, the ears, the eyes, what you take into your body, right? What you eat. Spirits can come in. What you smell, what you touch, what, who touches you. Um, spirits, evil spirits are, are, are not fair. They do not play by rules. If the parents are not protecting the children, they leave the doors wide open for their spirits to come in. And now we have a problem. The babysitter has now molested the children. The brother is fooling around with the sister, the uncle, the aunt, the dog. Okay? We have problems. When the parents, and, and, not, and, and I'm not saying no one's, per, you know, there's no perfect person out there. Jesus, only one. But when parents are using drugs and they're leaving their children unattended or they're allowing sleepovers or they're doing things that they're not protecting their children, I can tell you I meet with like four or five people a week who tell me the same story. It was the babysitter. It was my teacher, my coach. It was my brother. And spirits come in. So they also come in sp spiritually. And so I kind of talked a minute about that. So there are generational curses. And I'm going to talk more about curses in a minute. Spirits come in through sin, obviously, right? You sinned. You lied. You cheated. You um, dishonored your, your parents when you were young. That's sin. Spirits are going to come in. You're also going to get a curse. Okay, so they come in through trauma. I just talked about that. They come through transfers. Okay, I'll spend a minute on this. Um, I don't want you to be afraid of transfers, but just know that this is real. This is a real thing. Okay? Have you ever walked in someplace and you're like, oh, wow, I don't feel so good? And you leave that place and you're like, you know, I kind of have a little tummy ache. I kind of don't feel so, I kind of feel a little dizzy. Or someone touched you or something, and you're like, whoa, I don't feel so good. You picked up a transfer. That's what that was. It transferred right into you. If you're going to go into a sinful place, and this is why I, I, don't, I don't recommend, I mean, you got to know, you got to hear the direct calling from God, like, go to the strip club and, and, and help the strippers. No, I, I don't think a good place to go because you're walking into the enemy's camp, and that's not the way to do it. Those people will come out eventually, right? You can get them then. But, and, but you go in there, that place is full of spirits. This place is full of angels. That place is full of demons. And you're going in there without uh, a directive from the Lord? I think it's dangerous because you can pick up a spirit. Another way a transfer can happen is... Um, and this is why we said don't let you. Um, 
I don't know what I'm doing wrong with my sound. Sorry about that. Um, when you, if you just shake somebody's hand, you're, you're probably not going to get a transfer. Okay. Um, I already hugged a couple people today. I'm not worried. You know, one person hugged me twice. That's great. Um, I'm not worried about that, but if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be in a meditative state of prayer, or I'm gonna doing something spiritual, and someone's gonna lay hands on me to do something spiritual, pray, or declare, or whatever, that's a spiritual act. I can get a transfer of spirit from that person. There's something called a fire tunnel. Have you ever heard of that? Okay, don't you're gonna come to the altar if you've ever been to one of those. Um, that is like a crazy transfer city fire tunnels. You do not know what that person at, in the fire tunnel was doing the night before. They were on porn. They were with their, their girlfriend, boyfriend. They were masturbating. They were, you know, you don't know. This is real. And they're putting their hands on you. And, and, and what's happening? This is a spiritual thing you're doing. Could, are you always going to get a transfer? No, not always. It doesn't always happen, but it could. And then the next thing you know, you're having sexual dreams, and you're like, what the heck? I never have these. Oh, my gosh, this is disgusting. What happened? Well, that spirit transferred into you, and now it's messing with your dreams. It's in there. It's real. It is real. So that's, a, that's transfers, okay? Um, curses. Let's go back to curses. You guys know who Derek Prince is? Yeah, what a great man of God. Um, he did a sermon called Blessings and Curses. And I just want to point out some things from his teaching because he said uh, most curses come down from the generational bloodline. They come down the family bloodline, right? Um, there was a curse of poverty in my family. Generation, generation, generation. Miraculously, I became a Christian. I heard tithing was a good idea, so I started tithing. And God has blessed me. God has blessed me. I work part-time. I'm in ministry full-time. I'm blessed. I've never really wanted after I started tithing. You're having financial troubles? Could be a curse. It needs to be broken. Um... So, so generational curses, and then there's curses that people can put on you, and the worst ones are the Christian curses, word curses, speaking negatively about that person. You are word cursing them. I've, I've heard it said, I, one gal was like, yeah, my mom used to say, by this time next year, you'll have more difficulty in your life. I was, that's a straight-up word curse, and that's real. Um, so Derek Prince says these are some of the causes, and I'm going to go through quickly. Anti-Semitism. So maybe before you became a Christian, you didn't like Jews. Well, the Bible says that if you bless the, the Jewish people, you will be blessed. Abraham's seed. But if you curse them, you will be cursed. I'm kind of praying for the people in the Middle East right now because they're getting a lot of curses. It's a scary thing. I'm praying for mercy for them. Um, another one is idolatry. Um, occult practices. Uh, the New Age. You're like, yeah, but that was a long time ago. Well, I'll tell you, that curse could still follow you. Okay? Um, I dealt with so much witchcraft. I, I was like, where's the witchcraft? I never did... I never conjured a spell. I never looked at spell books. I never did anything like that. But growing up, my mom had the newspaper open every morning. And what were we reading? You bet. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, what's it say today? What's my day going to be like? Right? I was engaging in occult practice. Didn't even know it. She didn't know it. There's another one, too. I don't know if you know this one. It's, a, it's called the pendulum. Uh, well, there's lots of different ways you can handle pen, do use pendulums, but she did it where she had a, a needle and a thread, and she'd put it over the, you know this, over the wrist three times and hold it up and see if it goes back and forth, it's some gender, and if it goes in a circle, it's the other gender. That's the baby you're going to have in the future. That's divining. That's that's 
like a fortune telling. Yeah. I'm from New York, so maybe it's an East Coast thing. I don't know. No one ever knows about it in Arizona. Um, the witching rods, is that what they're called? What are witching? What's that? You're like, okay, I'm walking. Okay, we're seeing what they do. And now, oh, there's the water. Well, who's giving you the information? Okay. Um, the New Age, uh, you know, there's so much about that. Another curse is dishonoring your father and mother. If you were a rebellious teenager and you have not repented of this, well, if you were a rebellious teenager, right then and there, you brought a curse upon yourself that your life is going to be crap, pretty much. <laughs> um, so ask yourself, gosh, has my life been crappy? Uh, yeah, I kind of fail at everything, broken relationships, I can't keep my money, one job after another. Well, go back and think, was I dishonoring to my parents, yelling at my mom, you know, cursing them, going out, getting drunk, breaking curfew all the time, skipping school? Were you doing those things and you have not repented yet and, those, and your life is still crappy? Then it's probably the curse. So it's easy. You, you go and apologize. Now, if they're not alive, you can't do it. But if they are, you just make a phone call. And, and you just say, I'm, gosh, Mom, I realize I was not very good to you as a teenager. And I was difficult. And you're not going to say one thing about their difficulty. Don't do that. You know, but you drank. A, no, you're not going to say, but you did this. You're just going to say, this is what I did, and I'm sorry that I was difficult. I did this with my mom. And I know she was kind of waiting, like, and? Um, so, so, you know, you just, and that breaks it. You apologize, you repent to the Lord, you apologize to the Lord, and then that's it. It's easy. It really is. Um, incest is, is like a generational curse, um, the, the curse of incest. I get many 40, 50-year-olds, never conf they've never told anyone that they were having sex with their brother growing up. That happens. It happens. Okay. They bring a curse, a perversion into your life. And then a lot of people, they end up living double lives or one relationship after another. Sexual immorality. Murder will bring a curse. And I said word curses. Common indicators of a curse are these. Um, repetitive misfortune. I just, read, I just read a Facebook posting I made to my friend Jen yesterday, and it was like a memory of five, six years ago. And I wrote, I'm injuring myself every day. One, I was living outside of God's will. And two, I was living in a ghost town. I don't know how the curse came, maybe my disobedience, <laughs> but it did. And I, I would, I hurt my finger, I would fall, I sprained my ankle several times. I, um, I was getting injured like every day up there before the Lord called me into this ministry. It was a beautiful place in the mountains in Arizona, but um, it was repetitive misfortune. Um, and then once I finally moved off, they, the enemy was really mad, and I had 39 calamities in a, in a span of two months. And one day I'm going to do a teaching on that called 39 Calamities because it was really crazy. Um, repetitive or chronic sickness, especially if they are hereditary. That could be a curse. Um, repeated miscarriages or related female problems. Um, breakdown of marriage and family, alienation, especially from family, a family history of them. Yeah, miscarriages are typically a curse. Yeah. Um, being known as accident prone. Anybody known as accident prone in here? Was. Okay, she broke it. Not anymore. Um, Having a family history of suicides or unnatural deaths or early deaths, several of them. 
Can cancer could be a curse, but it also is related to bitterness. Mm -hmm. And so there's some accursed items I thought I'd just mention, um, to name a few. Because if you're going to go through deliverance, it's a good idea to have an idea of what you're dealing with, right? Or if you're working with somebody you're going to bring through deliverance, it's a good idea to know what to ask them or um, what, what some of their issues might be. And so there are some items that you might have tucked away somewhere in the garage that you don't even know, but um, maybe still hanging on your walls. Um, dream catchers are a big one. Um, I can't believe how many Christians <laughs> have dream catchers because they have bad dreams and it's, they want to ward off the bad dreams. Well, in fact, dream catchers draw them in. Um, any any kind of Native American art or gods, that's a, those items are going to bring in spirits. Sage or burning of sage. I'm on the plane yesterday, and I'm, I just looked over at the girl. She's watching some movie, some stupid movie, and the person's burning sage and cleansing the people. I mean, it's everywhere, right? If you did that in the past, you could have brought a curse upon yourself. You definitely drew in spirits. Uh, playing with the Ouija board, that's another, that's another thing that you are, you're conjuring a spirit to move the glass or the whatever, right? That was, you know, and, and now you can buy it on Amazon in pink for your kids. Yeah. I think you can buy a Barbie Ouija board, actually. So is that fun? Um, terror cards. Tarot card readings or angel cards, stay away from those, the Christian version of tarot cards. Don't get involved in that. Um, crystals for healing. There's nothing wrong with crystals. I have some crystals because I dug in a cave and I found them. I like that kind of stuff. Um, and I just know that's God's creation. There's nothing wrong with those crystals. All right? God's creation is perfect. Just because someone practices is into Wiccan and they worship the tree, there's nothing wrong with the tree. So um, religious statues like Buddha, Hindu gods, Mother Mary, the saints, you know, um, evil books that are occultic, satanic Bible, the Book of Mormon, you know, just to name a few. Some evil toys, there are those, Chucky doll, you know, I don't know much about toys, but. They're out there. Evil jewelry, the evil eye, messianic rings, etc. And soul tie items. Let me talk to you about them for a second. So maybe you had a boyfriend a long time ago. And he just shows up in your dreams like every so often. Think about it. Do you have something from that relationship still with you? Letters, pictures, jewelry stuff he gave you, or vice versa, right? That could be, uh, <clears throat> it's like a line in the spirit world connected from that person that you were in a relationship with 25 years ago or less, and then it's, it's you're holding on to the other end of the line with the thing that he gave you. Um, <clears throat> could be a soul tight object, right? And so that's, could be causing the problem. So I just want to say a prayer with you guys right now to break the curse, okay? So we don't want to dwell on the problem, but we want to affirm the solution that Jesus was made a curse, that we might enter into the blessing, okay? And so I'm just going to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your work on the cross. I proclaim that every indication of a curse in my life, the death of Jesus was the solution. For Jesus was made a curse that I might enter into the blessing. Amen. If you think you have a curse and, and, and there's more work to be done, you let us know. We'll pray for you. Um, the next one is healing versus deliverance. Okay. Um, so in the Bible, there's a lot of examples. I'm amazed. Once I, once I had my very first experience with deliverance in 2012, and then again, because um, I 2012 went through a lot of deliverance, 
but then get them all out, or, or I didn't learn how to fight. I didn't renew my mind I'll go over that. Um, and so then I got, I got reinfected. And so then I came back about four years ago. It will be four years. And, yeah, it's been about four years. I started coming back and experiencing a deliverance again. Um, I, I needed both healing and deliverance. Okay, so, so there's a difference between these. And I look at the book of Luke, and it has tons of examples. When you read your Bible differently when you experience deliverance. Because you realize what you're reading is for today. Um, so um, healing versus deliverance. So remember the woman with the issue of blood and, and, and Mark. That was a healing. Um, the guy's sight is restored in the book of John. Uh, the paralytic who was dropped down from the roof. That was a healing. Okay. Peter's mother-in-law, that was deliverance. Jesus came in and rebuked the fever, and it left. It didn't leave. He left the fever. Who's causing fever? The father's whose son had an evil spirit since infancy. He was the guy flailing around, and, and Jesus asked, you know, how long has he been like this? And he said, since infancy. That was a deliverance. And then there's a blind mute. And, and this is a great one in Matthew because you can really see how Jesus is talking about the blind mute, not the person, but the spirit. And he calls the spirit he. He is the blind mute. And he came out of the boy, and the boy spoke and could hear. Once the spirit, and this is true, sometimes we need healing and it, we need time to recover. Right? Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And recovery takes time. With deliverance, like a splinter, you remove the splinter and you get better like almost immediately, right? It's really true. Now, there's a caveat to that as well. But there's a, there's a, a remarkable difference I, I experienced a healing in my first year of becoming a Christian, and uh, I prayed, I believed, I heard Jesus, the blood of Jesus healed. <laughs> so I chose to say, okay, the blood of Jesus, I want to drink it in to heal my body, and I was healed the next day. Yeah. Um, but then deliverance is different. I had a back issue for like 10 years, over 10 years. They told me I had herniated discs. And uh, I was not going to, you know, I would always have chronic pain. This is the problem. So you know what you do when you have chronic pain? You try to fix it, right? And so I had the, the medication. I went to physical therapy. I did the shots. I did everything. And this one particular time, um, I had an episode where my back cramped up really bad. I was actually in bed for a week. I couldn't go to work. I, I could barely sit up. And I was saying, Lord, why? the medication, I was on a lot of medication. I was like, hi. He was like, hi. But the pain was still there. And I was like, Lord, why? I said, Lord, why, why, does, why isn't the medication working? And I, I was like, it was so distinct. I almost looked around to say, who said that? He said, it's, he said, it's not physical. It's spiritual. And I was like, oh. Okay, it's spiritual, my back, and get this fixed. I need, what do you think, I thought? I just need to get prayer. I need someone to pray for me. Just pray for me, and I'll be healed, right? You know how many times I've been to the altar for prayer for my back pain over 10 years? I thought, I just need prayer. Well, there's a prayer meeting. I'm going to go to it. And I meet this guy, Nick. Little did I know that he, his mentor was Mike Smith. <laughs> and I go to him at a church. He was like in a prayer room at the church. I'm like, all right, I just need prayer for my back. And he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, you got a demon of witchcraft in your back. I said, no, I can't possibly have a demon of witchcraft. I'm a Christian. What are you talking about? I'm a Christian, the Holy Spirit. No spirits can be in my body. You're wrong. You're crazy. I said, okay. He's like, who do you hate? I'm like, I don't hate anybody. Name pops in my mind. And I'm like, well, I'm like, Lord, I don't hate that girl. And the guy's like, this guy Nick's like, who did the Lord say? And uh, I'm like, well, we're having this three-way conversation. 
right? I go, well, well, this girl, her name is Kathy, and, and she really hurt me a lot, and, and I broke off a friendship, and shortly after, my back started hurting. And she said, was she prophetic? Was she prophetic? I said, well, yeah, she was. He's like, all right. He says, I want you to go in that room over there. He's like, that was a, you got a demon of witchcraft in your back. That came from that relationship. I want you to go in that room over there, and you pray to the Lord and ask him. I'm like thinking in my mind, will you just pray for me? Come on, dude. What is this, all this? So I go in the room. I close my eyes. Immediately, I see this tarantula here in my, in my imagination. I was like, wow, what is that? You know, it scared me. I was like, okay, let me try it again. Dear Lord, close my eyes. I see a revolver pointed at my head. I said, okay, that's enough. I got up and I sat in the chair. There was a row of five chairs. I can't believe I'm sharing this story. And uh, I'm sitting on the end, and I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> some bad words, and I'm thinking, just pray for me. <laughs> you know, like, God said it's spiritual. I just need prayer. I don't know what you're talking about. I can't have a demon. I'm a Christian, um, but I'm in a lot of pain, and I need a solution, right? So he says, well, did the Lord tell you you got a demon of witchcraft in your back? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm thinking, mustard seed of faith, mustard seed of faith. I was like, yeah, he told me. And so um, <laughs> he says this little prayer, Dear Heavenly Father, blah, blah, blah. Amen. And then he starts speaking, like, with authority. All I know is he sounds a little angry. And my body starts swaying back. I'm sitting in the chair. I'm doing like ab work, right? I'm going back and forth like this faster than I can move my own body. I'm thinking in my head, oh, my back hurts. What's happening? <laughs> You're going to hurt it even more. Twisting, twisting, twisting. I went straight as a board in the chair. I flopped across four folding chairs. They never fell down. And I landed clear on the other side. On my on my front. I coughed three times. He said, just lay there for a minute. <laughs> just thank the Lord. I said, okay. I got up. I kid you not, no back pain whatsoever. Zero. The splinter was removed. The pain was removed. I went on a 26-mile bike ride the weekend after just to prove it. And I was fine. 10, 10 plus years, and so much money. The enemy, he loves to steal money from us this way. He gives us a sickness, and then we try to, and then he gives us a solution. We'll get a massage, go to physical therapy, have some acupuncture done. Here, spend more money, get more sick, right? That's what he does. He gives us a problem, and then he gives us a solution. Okay, that's, that's how I got introduced to deliverance. <laughs> And then, and then just like a car that's got a bad muffler, once you get the muffler fixed, then you can hear the other problems. That's what it was in my life. The muffler, the back pain was so loud. I couldn't discern what else was wrong. I used to have, I'd move my head fast, I'd get dizzy. I'd get up too fast, I'd have a, bl a little mini blackout. I used to have bad dreams. All spirits. All spirits. I don't get dizzy anymore. I used to have vertigo. Nothing. It's all demonic. It's a splinter. Just got to take it out. All right. So quickly, I'm going to go through some blocks to healing. These things are going to block your healing. Now, Jesus, he healed by... <laughs> making some mud and putting it on people's eyes. He healed that way. He healed by just saying, you're loosed, you're healed. He healed through deliverance also, right? So healing comes through healing, and then healing also comes through deliverance. So blocks to your healing. These are some miracle blockers. Unforgiveness and negative feelings towards the person you have the issue with. That's going to block your healing. Um, negative feelings about yourself. You can't be running yourself down and expect God to do a miracle for you. Because he doesn't run you down. God has never had one negative thought about you your whole life. Not once. Not even when you were a sinner. All those negative thoughts are from him. Telling you. 
how crappy you are. Negative thoughts about yourself, like, I'm unworthy. Oh, I'm no good. God may not want to heal me. Oh, for sure you're not going to get healed with that attitude. For sure. Doubt and unbelief. I doubt it. I don't know. I'll just go and see what happens. No, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get healed. Unconfessed sin. You can't bury it. The Bible tells us to confess our sins to God, to confess our sins to one another. Okay, we can't keep it in there. Uh, I want to point this one out. Traditions of men, just one tradition of men, if it's his will. You're praying the prayer. Lord, heal this back pain. We know you can do it, Lord, if it's your will. That prayer just took a nosedive. You were doing good. Lord, it's your, you know, we know you can do it. We believe you. If it's your will, crash. What did he say to the leper? The leper said, you know, can you heal me? Or will you do it? Are you willing? And Jesus said, I am willing. What did he come here for? To destroy the works of the devil, right? He came. He shed his blood on the cross to heal us. So how crazy is that? This is a tradition that, that we've come up with. If it's his will. No, it's always his will to heal. There's something blocking. We just got to figure it out. Figure out the blocker. Okay? All right. So how am I doing on time? Good? Um, we have something called the miracle list. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, good. Um, how many of you have started or completed the miracle list? Okay, good, good. Um, the rest of you, you're going to get the miracle list. I hope we have some copies of it. I don't know. Oh, we do? Okay, great. Do we have them right now? Oh, can we pass them out? Oh, good. Oh, terrific, terrific, terrific. I'll just take a minute right here. Didn't, didn't Blanca do a great job putting this whole thing together? Let's give her a hand. She did a great job. And the Rivera team, they did a great job. This church is awesome. Um, yeah, that was amazing. So the miracle list, we're not trying to be religious on you. Like, you got to do this list and get healed and nothing else. No. Um, this list helps you come into alignment with God's Word, okay? You may not know where you're out of whack. It's your, it's your adjustment. It's your spiritual chiropractor adjustment, <laughs> the miracle list, okay? You, you need to do, if you have unresolved issues in your life, right, you have some, you know, maybe you got arthritis. I would say that that's, something a lot of people deal with, and uh, you want healing, right? Well, the miracle list is going to help you investigate where you're out of alignment with God's Word, okay? And it's going to help you weaken the spirits that got in over time, okay? So those spirits that started getting in in childhood and adolescence, early 20s, those spirits that were getting in over time when you were younger, they're hanging out in there causing problems for your body, causing problems in your mind, causing problems in your soul. And so the Miraculous is going to help you weaken those spirits and help you investigate, where do I need to make adjustments in my life? Okay? So it, it challenges you to take action. It, it gives you uh, some knowledge. It's going to say, go here, watch this video, watch that thing. There's one video that's awesome called, called Overcoming Rejection. And that's a, that's a big one, very important and very helpful. Very, you can actually take notes to it. Mike's not a teacher like I was a teacher in the schools. I did eight years in the junior high school. <laughs> I was in for eight years. <laughs> Okay, I, was, I did junior high school longer than anyone in this room. Um, 
And then I moved to the college, which was a pleasure. But uh, no, junior high school is a pleasure too. They're funny. Always very laughing all the time. Um, so you're going to get knowledge. You're going to learn how to uh, do effective spiritual warfare. Okay? I was talking with a friend of mine, and I said, you know, we've been hearing about spiritual warfare a lot in church. I mean, I heard about it for years and years and years, but I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. I just didn't get it. I think I was blocked. You might be blocked. Your church may teach it, but you're blocked. Those spirits in you that are blocking you from receiving and, and really applying it. Okay? So this is something I do all the time is I help people learn how to do spiritual warfare and we practice. So um, the most powerful weapon I believe anyone can have to do spiritual warfare is praying in tongues. That is your number one spiritual weapon. If you have not released your gift of tongues, and I'll, and I'll tell you this, you guys are a small group, maybe, you know, it's not too many people here, but if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. You have the ability to pray in tongues. I'm not talking about the speaking in tongues with interpretation. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the, okay? I'm talking about the little, you know, you and the Lord. I mean, you're going to hear me pray today with the altar call because that's just what I do. And we're praying. We're talking to Father, right? And so every Christian can do that. It's a sign of the believer, right? So that's your number one warfare tool. If you have not yet released your gift of tongues, um, Brother Joe is going to help you do it. You just come over here to the altar. He's our expert on staff. <laughs> Not right now. I'll, give, I'll tell you when. When I call people forward. Uh, and he'll help you get it. Okay? Almost 99% of the people that I meet with in my office who do not have their gift of tongues leave with their gift of tongues. Okay? It's, it's not rocket science. It's a gift. You already got it. God wants you to have it. It's powerful. Godly sorrow is the other thing you need. Godly sorrow in humility is one of the, the most powerful fighting tools against the enemy. You know why? Because when you're brokenhearted, who's right next to you? Holy Spirit. The Bible says that God is close to the brokenhearted. He is close to the brokenhearted. When you are broken and weeping before the Lord, man, that enemy is in trouble. Trouble. And you got to hate demons. you got to hate these things. And you got to understand what they are. They're the, we say they're symptoms, right? Depression, I hated it. Anxiety, I hated it. I'm like, no, this fear, no, you're not going to control my life anymore. You have to leave me. Sexual dreams. No, I hate you. Get out. Um, and so when you, when you combine those three things together, and that's all on the miracle list, okay? When you put those three things together, man, the Lord, it's powerful. It's very powerful. And the enemy doesn't stand a chance. And then you practice it. One of the things on there is, is catching your thoughts. And uh, you just need to keep doing it. You know, I, I'm going along, and then I'm like, I need to go back to number four on the miracle list. You know, I mean, it's, it's just the way of life. It's what, it's what the Bible tells us to do. Capture your thoughts. Take every thought captive. Not just the bad ones, but even the good ones. Like, take them thought. Who, where is this coming from? What is this doing? And lastly, um, and I kind of mentioned it already, but, <coughs> excuse me, maybe I'll take this. My friend Jennifer taught me um, before counseling appointments that she prays that God would send her a person who's broken. Broken hearted. Um, She's not even in the room. She's coming back. Yeah. Yes, you have a question?
Godly sorrow. Yeah, I'm going to kind of talk about that right now because, um, you know, if if someone comes in, I had a guy, he was a mechanic, this guy. He came in, his hands are like black with grease. He smelled like diesel fluid. He's about 6'1". Um, nice guy, but, man, he couldn't stop crying. He was a, he was a big guy, and uh, he got himself in some bad sin. And he was like, I, I need help. I, I screwed up. I cheated on my wife with a witch. My mind is going crazy. I can't think straight. I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my family. My wife told me to go get deliverance. We're still working with that guy. But he came in an emotional wreck. I was like, that's great. Super. Because I know the Lord's heart. The Lord's heart is, I'm going to run to you. Because when you're brokenhearted, you're reaching for the hem of his garment. And everything else fades away for him. And he says, that's my daughter. I'm going to give her, uh, she just gains my attention. In Isaiah 6 and 6, 1, it says, it talks about God having command of everything in the world. The animals, the, the ocean, and the, the weather, and everything he can do stuff with. But there's one thing that he doesn't have command over, and that's your heart. You have to bring it to him. And when you do, he runs. <laughs> I get to see it every week. I get to see people healed and delivered from the spirit of suicide, depression, mental illness. I had schizophrenia, schizophrenic in my office on Tuesday. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're the hardest. His mind was going 100 miles an hour and his body was moving all over the place and he couldn't sit still. I just told him how much God loved him. And I said, yeah, these are, these are demons. They're in your mind. You can get free, but it's going to be hard. But you can do it. He just cried. He left. He was calm. I mean, I cast out some spirits, too. I don't know if anything came out because they're so hard. But he left calm. He left peaceful in his mind and he said he hadn't felt he said he hadn't cried in a really long time that the holy spirit came and touched him it's not what i do it's nothing it's not me right sometimes i'm taking notes i look up and i'm like oh the holy spirit's here oh my goodness <laughs> person's crying i'm like okay it's time to go <laughs> At the name of Jesus, every knee bows. But you have to speak the name of Jesus. I was sick for a really long time. And I went to church and no one could help me. They didn't know what was wrong. They didn't know the signs of a believer that we can cast out spirits. We can cast out demons. And we can be free. They didn't know. So many, and how many of you? You've gone for prayer over and over and over again, and nobody knows how to help you. My life is saved. I know Jennifer's life is saved. I know Joe in the back, his life is saved. Her life is saved because of it, because of what Jesus did. He came to destroy the works of the devil, but he then said, you go and do it. It's part of the Great Commission. So if you have a broken heart, or you know you have spirits and you just want Jesus to come and help you and heal you. Let come. And come come up right now. You want your, your gift of tongues flowing? Come up over here. We'll help you get it. Because the Holy Spirit is right here. He sees your heart. I don't know if it's possible to put on a little light music back there, but 
If it is, that would be awesome. Uh, can we have a little music? Is that possible? Oh, great. Thank you so much. All of heaven rejoices when one person gives their life to the Lord. A lot of you have been playing church. You got one foot in, and you got one foot out. You're not demonstrating the signs of a believer. You're not speaking in tongues. You're not casting out demons. You're not laying hands on the sick and that are being healed. You're not sharing the gospel. You're just doing the church thing. Just, um, I invite you to come forward and say, Lord, I want to give you more of my heart. More, Lord. I want more of you. Because I realize this life has nothing for me. This life has absolutely nothing for me. And I'm So tired of seeing the brethren sick and worn out and broke and hopeless. Just come up here and just pray and thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jen and Stephanie, you want to come on this side and let Joe take that side. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are close to the brokenhearted. Thank you, Lord. You wipe our tears away. You collect them in a bottle. They're so important to you. Every tear we cry. They're so important to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you my heart. I thought I gave you my heart, Lord, but I keep turning back to this other side of the world of Satan and sin and hopelessness and gossip and bad attitude. Lord, I open my heart to you. And I ask you to come in, Lord, and just come in a little farther into my heart. There's some hard places in my heart, Lord. I know it. I need you to help me. Don't be afraid. You can sit in your chair, but it's nice to get up. He'll come to you. The Lord is gracious. He is compassionate. He is slow to anger. He is abounding in great love. The Lord never fails. You did not make him mad. You didn't. Just repent to the Lord for your stubbornness. Go ahead and just say, Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord. You've called me, Lord. You called me a long time ago, and I didn't listen. You called me a long time ago, Lord. I didn't listen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for healing broken hearts. Thank you, Lord, for healing broken hearts. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sondo roshana de ke se de la raka so posh kanata. De le ke la ri anara ma sondo de kataba. I bind every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind every spirit of fear. Worry. I bind you right now. 
all those spirits of fear and nervousness, anxiousness, anxiety. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you right now. You come out of that sister right there. You're a devil. You're ruining her life. You come out right now. Out of that body, devil. Come out of there. Loose her now. Go, hopelessness. Go, hopelessness. Come out right now. Come out right now. That's right. Go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's the sound of freedom. That's the sound of freedom right there. I bind and rebuke all demonic reinforcements sent by the enemy to attack and hinder and frustrate the plan of God over your life. I bind up every spirit of fear, doubt, unbelief, discouragement, despair, and depression. I tell you to come out right now. That's, that you, these are, they are monsters. They're destroying your life. You tell them to go in Jesus' name. Depression, come out of there. Pride, rebellion, disobedience, and ego. Independence, lack of forgiveness. Come out of there right now. Bitterness, just breathe and blow. Just breathe. Don't worry about them. God's healing the broken heart right now. There you go. I come against all lying and seducing spirits, deceiving spirits that are trying to attack you. I send judgment upon them right now. I bind up every spirit of envy and covetiveness, jealousy and lust. I bind that spirit of lust of the eyes, lust of the world, lust of the flesh, sexual dreams. I command you to come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that body. Loose her now. Loose her right now. Come out of there. Come out, you spirit of infirmity. Come out right now. Just tell the Lord, say, Lord, I am so sorry. I've been holding on to unforgiveness. I've been holding a grudge. And Lord, I am so sorry for that. Lord, I've been having negative thoughts about myself. And I can't stop nitpicking myself. I'm so sorry, Lord, for that. I'm so sorry, Lord. I forgive myself for making all these mistakes and bad choices in my life, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry for being bitter. Your word says that bitterness dries the bones. I'm sorry for holding on to that grudge. I'm sorry for hating my parents. Lord, I'm so sorry for rebelling against my parents when I was young. I'm sorry, Lord. I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. I know it hurt you, Lord. I know it hurt you, Lord. I repent of being so afraid. I'm so sorry, Lord, of being so afraid, afraid to go to church, afraid to speak up, afraid to go to the grocery store, afraid to have friends. I'm so sorry, Lord, for being afraid of doing what you've called me to do. I command the spirit of fear to get out of me in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. That spirit of fear that's holding you back, that's ruining your destiny. I command you to come out right now. You spirit of fear, come out in Jesus' name. That spirit of rejection, come out of there. Come out right now. Spirit of fear, come out in Jesus' name. Loose them. Loose them right now. Loose right now. Loose right now. Come out of there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's only you that can heal the broken heart, God. You're the only one, Lord, that is capable. I want to break every demonic altar that's been set up for you in the name of Jesus. Every demonic altar that was set up with your name upon it, with your hair upon it, with your picture upon it. I break the curse over you right now in the name of Jesus. Every demonic curse that's been spoken over you, I break it right now. Come out. Come out of that body. Come out right now. Come up and out. Every demonic altar that's been set up against you, I break it down. I break the curse. I break the spell over your mind, over your body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm so sorry for, for all the new age practices in the past, Lord. I repent of it right now, God. I repent, Lord. I worship another God. Some of you even worship another Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for it. I repent of it right now. I bind these spirits of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. The spirits of witchcraft. Come out right now. Spirits hindering spirits. Blocking spirits. Monitoring spirits. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Every monitoring spirit. Come out right now. Come out right now. I break the cord of influence between you and that other person. I break it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I break this curse upon your life. Constant accidents. I break the curse of constant misfortune. I break the curse over you in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out of there. So I want you to just breathe, okay? Because we don't have a big team today, but just breathe. And you just let them come up and out, all right? You can feel it. You just keep breathing, and you can tell them yourself, come out of my body. Anger, come out of me. Lord, I'm so sorry for losing my cool. Lord, I, I am so sorry, Lord, for cooperating with the spirit of anger. I am so sorry, Lord. I repent of it right now. Always having to have the last word. I repent of it right now. And I command that spirit of anger to come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Anger, resentment, unforgiveness, revenge, come out right now. Revenge, come out of me. Bitterness, come out right now. Come out and loose me. Come out and loose me. Go in Jesus' name. Just take a nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. Go. If someone ever molested you when you were young or as a teenager, I want you to forgive them from your heart right now. Okay? Just forgive them. They were full of spirits. The demons told them what to do, and they did it. So just forgive them right now. Say, Lord, I want to forgive that person. And just speak out their name really softly. Say, Lord, I, for, I want to forgive that person who hurt me, who ruined my life, who raped me, who molested me, who touched me, who exposed me to pornography when I was too young. I was a little kid. It gave me a wrong impression of, of, of love and sex. Lord, I'm so sorry. I, I've, I've hated that person all these years. And I want to release him right now. Just take a deep breath, symbolically, just... I release that person. I release my brother. I release my sister. I release my father. I release him, Lord. I release my mother. I release that babysitter. I release right now. I'm not going to hold on to this any longer. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to forgive like you told me to forgive, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Thank you, God. And now I command that spirit that those abusers brought to you to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Those spirits that came in through the abuse, I command you to come out right now. Come out right now. Spirits of abuse, come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Go in Jesus' name. Spirits of abuse, come out of there. Spirits of verbal abuse. Spirits of physical abuse, spirits of sexual abuse, spirits of emotional abuse and spiritual abuse. I command you to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come up and out right now. Come up and out right now. Go in Jesus' name. Spirits come out through tears. They come out through coughing. They come out through deep breaths. Okay, you might spit out something. It's okay. Just let them come up and out. I command that spirit of lust to come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm sorry for the adultery. I'm sorry for the fornication. Lord, I'm so sorry for the perversion in my life. I'm sorry for watching pornography, Lord. I'm sorry for going to those clubs, Lord. I am so sorry, God. I can't stop on my own. Nobody even knows what I'm doing. 
and I can't stop on my own, Lord. I've tried to crucify the flesh, but I keep going back. That's a spirit, brother. That's a spirit, sister. You got to get it out. Get that splinter out. You just put your hand on your body. Put your hand on your stomach. Put your hand on your head and say, you cut out of my body right now. In the name of Jesus, come out of my body right now. Spirit of lust, come out of there. Spirit of perversion, come out. Spirits, come out right now. Spirits of homosexuality, come out in Jesus' name. Loose them right now. Loose right now in the name of Jesus. Go. Why do we repeat so much? Well, Jesus couldn't even get demons out on the first try sometimes. They're stubborn. They don't want to leave their house. They don't want to leave their home. Sometimes it's hard to come into alignment with what God's doing. So we have to keep at it, all right? And they, they'll come up and out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to turn off my mic, but I'm going to keep praying.
just get a fancy bed there and I'll plug her the door. She said, but maybe it was just done and I your sister and I can